We are the dollars and cents. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Well, today we're gonna do another first impressions video. Unfortunately, I don't have the box for this one, but you guys have seen the uh, boxes for this brand plenty of times. And actually, I think I did a video for this one maybe four videos back. So if you guys have, don't know what it looks like, either Google it or go to, go to my video and check that one out. I will post any video from this house down in the uh, description below. That way you guys can see my thoughts on the other offerings from this house. But it is from the house of Zierjoff, guys. Got this one in a swap, I think, um, probably a couple of months ago. And I'm just not getting my nose on it. And it is um, from the house of Zierjoff from the Oud Stars version uh, line, Mamluk. Mamluk from the house of Zierjoff, guys. And again, you guys know the... If you know, you know, but I'll show you guys briefly the bottle. This is a used bottle. I don't want to take the cap off just yet because I don't want to get any sneak previews. But we do have a nice gold uh, plate here. Nice, heavy, thick glass bottle. Uh, gold cap here does say Zerzhov. I believe there is an X on the inside of the cap as well. A little sticker on the bottom, guys. But yeah, you know, if you guys know Zerzhov, you guys know they, they pay attention to quality. Um, some are worth the money. Some aren't. Some are way out there. Some are okay. You know, and I have a few in my line. I think I still own Neo. I own Kobe. And I think that might be it. I just actually sold that Uden um, overdose because I just, you know, got to make money in for some new videos, guys. Got to keep you guys watching out there. But a little bit of information about this fragrance. Mamluk from the House of Zizhoff is a unisex amber woody gourmand fragrance released in 2012. The nose behind this fragrance is Chris Maurice and it is an eau de parfum concentration uh gotta double check that because sometimes these are extraits i think right no i'm just gonna say eau de parfum concentration on this one um the notes for this fragrance on top we have honey caramel and bergamot we're off to a good start guys in the mid we have benzoin jasmine and osmanthus and the base run things off with amber vanilla oud something called booyah booyah i don't know what that is and musk guys um so yeah I don't know what to expect from this fragrance. I haven't heard anything about it. I do know that the, the brown bottle line is a bit more out of Malik, a bit ooty, a bit funky, a bit stanky or skanky. Um, cause there's a couple, I think whenever I was getting this one, I might've talked to Brandon about it. And the guy that I got it from, he had three, three offerings from the brown bottle line. Uh, I guess the Oud stars line. And I asked him, Hey, what do you think about these three? He, I think he said this one was the, probably the easiest to wear. Um, the uh, least uh, animalic. So I was like, okay. He's like, yeah, you want to stay away from one of those because it smells very barnyardy. So this is the one I picked. All right, guys, well, let's give this one a first impression. I'm going to wear this one today. It's rainy outside, probably muggy. So we'll see. Hopefully, I read the notes and it sounds pretty good. Like I'm like, honey and caramel, can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with vanilla, you know, and amber and with with the oud, who knows? But it is, it is Zerjoff, guys. Zerjoff can take these notes and completely screw it up. I'm sorry. I know you guys are going to hate me for saying that, but these niche houses can take a good, good looking composition and they can just make it smell like crap. So I'm hoping this is not one of those times, guys. All right. So clean hand, enough chatter out of me. Clean hand, a couple of sprays. Here we go. Good sprayers always with these fragrances, these bottles. Okay. Immediately getting that honey note. It's like a thick, very sweet, natural smelling honey. Getting the caramel mixing nice with this one. So it's, uh, and I'm getting some of the floral notes here. It's either the jasmine or the osmanthus. So it's getting a little floral. Uh, wasn't expecting those to come in as heavy as they are because that honey and that caramel were right there. And they're still, they're still floating around, but that the uh, jasmine and the osmanthus, I'm guessing it's one of the two. I'm, we'll just say jasmine for sure. I think I've tried jasmine. Um, like it, it, in a, when it was made, like the the main player in a fragrance before. So I'm definitely getting that. It smells like it smells like uh, flowers. Like you're walking through a spring garden and you're getting a hint of some of the flowers. That's what these, this jasmine smells like. But it's that's mixed with honey. So it's giving me a nice um, picture in my mind of like even though this is a very thick, heavy, sweet fragrance, it it smells like a spring day. Um, can you wear this in a hot spring? Probably not. But I'm just saying like. Because it give you a picture like maybe walking by, like you're walking through some woods or whatever, and then you see like maybe um, a beehive, right, with some honey, and you get like a, maybe a small hint of honey mixed with some like uh, floral notes kind of bouncing around, you know. That's kind of what I'm getting. But it's, this isn't bad uh, by any means, but it's very natural smelling honey. This isn't super duper sweet. It's like thick, and it has like that thick um, honey. I, I can't really describe it. Just a thick honey smell. Very natural smelling honey fragrance here. Not getting a lot of the bergamot. A slight hint of that caramel to give it a bit of a gourmand um, sweetness, but not too much. 
The vanilla's in there for sure. It's just uh, right now the honey note's really overtaking all the other sweet notes in this. I'm not getting a lot of oud either. Like it's there, but I'm not getting like a strong barnyard oud, a Middle Eastern oud, a Adam Alec oud, a plastic oud, none of that. Not yet anyway. Right now, I'm just getting a lot of what I just mentioned. A lot of the honey, the florals, and that's really it. Uh, no amber, no vanilla, at least not like uh, vanilla in the uh, traditional sense. Because the honey note is really just the main player for all the sweetness. So I can't really pinpoint the difference between the honey and the vanilla right now. So I'm guessing because it is in the base, that's what you're going to be left with maybe after an hour or so. Yeah, I mean, not a bad fragrance. Uh, you guys would probably guess the uh, seasons for that, but if I if I went ahead and said it now, I guess we wouldn't have an update. But one thing that I'm uh, I'm a little shocked by is that even though it's just the first impressions, I really I really feel like this isn't that strong. Just right now, I could be completely wrong. I always say that, guys. This is what this was the beauty of making these types of videos. But right now, um, it's not as heavy, as thick, or as sweet. It's thick, but not like as sweet, as heavy, as thick as I thought it was going to be. But, I mean, that was three sprays. But I could be, again, completely um, wrong on that one because um, time always tells, guys. Time is an incredible thing. But right now, I don't want to spend too much uh, too much longer on this um, half of the video because right now, I'm just this is just what I'm getting. I'm not getting a lot of other players, honestly. Just a very thick, sweet, honey, honey heavy fragrance. So if that sounds good to you, then you guys want to stay tuned to the second half of the video. Yeah, so looking forward to seeing where this one goes, guys. Uh, some more of this fragrance today and over the next couple of days. Give you guys some day shortly. Talk to you then. All right, guys. Well, I'm back with my update for Mamluk from the House of Zerzhov, their Oud Stars line. And I got to say, I don't hate this fragrance. Not uh, one of my favorites, I guess, from Zerzhov, but it's not... Uh, it's not my least favorite either. Um, I was really expecting this one to be really skanky, very animalic, just going in a whole different, um, down a different road. And it, it really didn't. It, it really, what I got out of this mostly was that honey note and the florals that I mentioned in the first half of the video. And honestly, I'm sure there's a lot more going on with this um, and a little bit of the caramel, I guess, because it is sweet. But but um, I know there's a lot more going on with this, but... Honestly, that's really all I got. I mean, the notes are saying here it has honey, caramel, uh, benzoin, and vanilla. So it's very sweet. But the honey note in this stays strong like the entire time. And that's what you, what you get. Honestly, it reminded me a little bit, and I know that some of you guys probably haven't tried this one. The honey note reminded me a little bit of Roaring Radcliffe. Very natural smelling honey. I like this one better because it has tobacco and tonka bean and a few other notes that I like better. Um, but this one sort of reminded me of that when it comes to that honey note. That's really, honestly, if someone asked me, what you, what's the majority of the notes that you get from this fragrance? I'm going to say honey and some sweet notes, all the sweet notes that I mentioned, and some florals. That's about it. I don't get any, um, I don't get any of the, the oud. So it's woody, but it's not oudy. It's not Middle Eastern oudy. It's not plasticky oudy. It's not animalic oud. It's not, I don't get any of your traditional or even like any kind of oud in this, honestly. There's just a little bit of woodiness to my nose in the dry down. And it smells really good. Like, in the dry down, it actually reminds me... I couldn't think of which one, but it reminded me of a designer that I've tried before. So that's that's not a bad thing. I know it might it might cheapen the fragrance, but, but that, that's not how I meant it. I actually meant that in a good way. Um, because something about the dry down, I, re I really did like. Um, but over, I mean, just not, not a bad fragrance, but, I mean, definitely, like I said, it wasn't my favorite. Uh, longevity for this fragrance was, yeah, eight hours. Um... Got eight hours of this fragrance every time I wore it. Um, and that's great, especially for what you're going to be paying for this fragrance. Um, but yeah, eight hours is always good for an Eau de Parfum. Uh, projection wasn't beast. I was expecting this one to clear out a room, honestly. I really, just with the notes, I really thought it was going to. It's really nice for an Eau de Parfum, but it is not uh, you know, going to uh, fill up a room. The, the, the first couple of hours are great. And it's strong, but it's not beast. You know, again, um, I've heard some of these other ones from this line are super duper strong. And this one is not, which is, can be a good thing and a bad thing. To me, it's a good thing because, um, I guess you just don't want to be like super duper strong, even though it is a sweet, safe fragrance. Um, 
you know, like it, you, you still don't want to just be blowing people out of the room with a, with a fragrance that's too sweet. You don't want to be cloying and affecting people around you. And honestly, I wore this fragrance in the heat and it was not that bad. Seasons for this fragrance. If you guys haven't guessed already, it's going to be the cooler, colder months of the year. Yes, I did wear this one in warmer weather. Um, and you could maybe get away with it like on a cooler, warmer kind of night. But overall, I'm just going to say play it safe with the, the, the thick honey note and all these gourmand notes in it. You're going to want to play it safe and just say, um, let's just say it's going to be uh, fall, um, fall, winter, and early spring. Occasions for this fragrance, I would say, are evening events. Yes, I could probably wear this one casually, but honestly, uh, I, you know, it is a darker, thicker, heavier fragrance. So I do think that uh, evening events be best for this fragrance. So, um, you know, night, uh, a night out, you know, suit and tie, dress down, a date night. Uh, I'm not sure it would be strong enough for a club. Again, it's it's nice. It, it has decent projection, but I don't know about about club projection. Plus, it's a little it's a little different with a lot of that honey note, so it's not going to be really a fragrance to wear wear to a club around young people anyway, right? So probably not best for a club. Might be okay for work though. I did wear this one to work, and it wasn't it wasn't the worst thing ever. Ages for this fragrance, I'm gonna say are thirty and up, mainly just because of the price. Mainly the price and also, I guess, second is going to be the um, just the fact that it's like a niche honey fragrance. Um, it's not super daring. I, I mentioned it's a little bit mainstream, and you can probably get away with it because it is sweet and safe. Uh, but it's still, you know, super expensive, and it's still different. The honey note might turn some younger noses off. Some of the young guys out there might be like, oh, what's this? I don't even, I don't want to smell like honey. So that's probably, I'm guessing that's what they're going to say about this one. Um, so yeah, 30 and up, I think it would be a safe age range for the price and for the fragrance itself. Overall, I do like this fragrance. Honestly, my only complaint with this fragrance would, would have been maybe maybe the projection a little bit. Maybe I wish it would have popped off my skin a little bit more. Um, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Um, and it had a little bit of bombiness, right? A little bit of like waxiness, as I call it. I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, but it was there. And it wasn't the worst that I've tried. Uh, I've had worse um, bombiness in other fragrances. Um, but this one was there. And it just sort of lends to the powderiness, right? So if you like... Um, Sweet, gourmandy, slightly floral, powdery uh, fragrances with decent performance. And you're going to want to get your hands on Mamluk, though. I mean, I'm going to put the price right here. Not sure if it's going to be what you guys want to spend, though. Because I want to say that these are, even at some of the discount sites, this is still going for quite a bit. So, um, that being said, I'm not going to tell you guys to go out and blind buy this one. It's not... It's not the best thing I've ever tried, you know. But I do love the bottle. I do love the house. I do love a lot of their creations that they put out. But overall, I'm just gonna be like, hey, you know, like the fragrance isn't isn't all that. It's not that great. It's okay. Not worth the price tag and not worth blind buying, guys. So please, I, I you know, be be good with your money out there, guys, and don't, especially on my account, don't go on my video, don't go to my channel and be like, oh, you know, uh, dollars and cents told me to buy this one because I am not telling you. I'm saying it's good, but not that great. So, uh, what are your thoughts on Mamluk from the House of Azurjov, guys? Have you tried this fragrance? Let me know your thoughts on the fragrance in the, down in the comments below. So I love to hear. What you guys are thinking about this one, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching the video on my channel. If you like this video, please click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and turn on those notifications for future first impressions videos. And first set of content just like this, guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, dollars and cents. There you'll find first set of photos and future contest winners. And as always, till next video, you guys take care. Thanks.